For this video, I'm going to teach long division, and I'm actually going to do it a little bit different uh, way than I've ever taught it before, but I think the process will make sense to you, and you'll understand why I'm teaching it different, and be able to choose your method once you understand it uh, better. Let me first put a problem on the board. Um, let's say we, you had a problem like 1,700 and 60 divided by 5. So what you're trying to find here is how many times does 5 go into 1,760 or 5 times what equals 1,760. The steps we're going to focus on are in this yellow box. We're going to do this way I'm going to for this video I'm going to teach division as a series of DRB. You remember DRB, and you'll be in luck. DRB, that's what division's all about. The D standing for divide. The R standing for remaining. So after you divide, you're going to want to find out R, how much is remaining, and then B for bring down. Now, in order to do this, you might have to use subtraction at times um, to help you. The reason, the formal way that I've taught it in different videos in the past is DMSB, which stands for divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. However, I find that those second two steps, multiply and subtract, just confuse students. So we're going to condense it to the method that's DRB. Now, unlike with any other computation, where you always start in the ones place, where the zero is, with long division, you actually start in the largest place value, which is, in this case, the thousands. But remember, it's still in the thousands place. You're not really treating it like the one. So step one is you're looking at this and you're saying divide. One divided by five. Although this is really like one thousand divided by five, but you're, tr you're treating this as like a one. And you're thinking, how many times does the five go into the one? How many times does five go into one? And we all know that's impossible. So we're gonna put a zero above the one. Well, we've divided, and if five goes into one zero times, how much do you have remaining? Well, you still have that one. So in this case, we're just going to move over to the 17. We don't need to worry about the remaining or the bringing down. Um, five goes into one zero times, so you would have one remaining, and you would bring down that seven. So you'd still have 17, which is why I say it's not really a necessary step. Um, but what you would do now is look at 5. How many times does 5 go into 17? Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 4 is 20. So 5 goes into 17 three times. So I just did the division. I did 17 divided by 5, and I got 3. 5 goes into 17 three times. Now let's move to the remaining. Well, we said 5 goes into 17 three times, but it doesn't go into 17 perfectly, meaning that there's some remaining. So what I do when I write how many is remaining is I put a line under the number, and then I just write how many is remaining. Well, there are going to be two remaining because... When 5 goes into 17 three times, that is equal to 15, and you have 2 remaining. So we just did the R, and now we bring down. Bring down that next place, which is the 6. So you're going to take that 6, and I like to have students draw an arrow. So you're going to draw an arrow down and just slide that 6 down. The reason I say to draw an arrow is because... For the next step, you know not to bring down that 6. We've already used that 6. And on my paper, I can't show you an arrow right now. Maybe for the next uh, model, I will. So we have a new division problem now because we did the bring down. So go back up to divide. And now our new number here that we're going to focus on is 26. So the question is 5 goes into 26 or 26 divided by 5. How many times does 5 go into 26? 
I know 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 times 6 is 30, and that's too big. So 5 goes into 26 5 whole times. And so I just divided. Now the question is, how much is remaining? And I'm going to put that draw bar right under the 26 and, and write down how many is remaining. Well, 5 goes into 26 5 times, and that's equal to 25. So it doesn't go in perfectly. We have 1 remaining. So I'm going to put my remaining one right there. My next step, I did the D, I did the R, now it's to bring down. So with your pencil as you're working along with me, you'll draw a line down from the zero, and you'll draw it all the way down to next to that one, because that's where you're bringing down that zero to. And after you bring down, you divide again. Five goes into 10, how many times? Two times, and write down how many you have remaining right after and there will be zero remaining because 5 goes into 10 perfectly and there's nothing left to bring down and there's nothing remaining so your answer is 352 which makes sense to go back in and look at well 300 times 5 would be about 1500 and you have 52 more times 5 so that makes sense and you know you've got an answer you always write your quotient up above this line here. All right, let's do another one together. And I want you to be about one step ahead of me the whole time. So I'm going to put up a new problem now. Let me just reset the board here. And I can delete all of this. And my new problem is going to be a little bit harder. Just remember, it's all about the DRB, D for divide, R for remaining, and B for bring down, and you'll be successful. The next problem I'm going to give you is a little bit harder, um, and we're going to have a remainder. I'll tell you how to work with that, too. Let's give you the value 8,798. And we're going to divide 8,798 by... 8. And let's begin. Look at your first step. It is D for divide. Well, you're going to start in the largest place value when you do division. And you're going to write your quotient right above. So 8 goes into the 8 of 8,798. Does 8 go into 8? Yes it goes in one time. Now, after we did the divide, find out how many is remaining. You said eight goes into eight one time. Well, one eight, eight is going to be eight. Eight times one is eight. So you're not going to have anything remaining because it, eight goes into eight perfectly. So you have nothing remaining. The next step is to bring down now, give yourself some kind of, make sure you draw an arrow when you bring down that 7. And you're going to bring down that 7, you're going to draw an arrow down, and bring down that 7 right next to the 0. I want you to continue the problem from here. So press pause and try it. And don't be afraid to make a mistake. Uh, when you think you've got an answer or you are completely confused, then press play and watch how I go about solving the problem. I'm going to continue now. You brought down that 7, and now, after you bring down, you go right to divide. So the new problem is 7 divided by 8. Wow, that's not possible. 8 does not go into 7. It's too small. When you count by 8s, you're already bigger than 7. So 8 goes into 7 zero times, so you're going to write a 0 in that quotient bar over here. When 8 goes into 7 times, 8 goes into 7, well, it doesn't. So you have all seven remaining. So you should have drawn a line under that 07 and just written the seven because that's how many you have remaining. The next step after you write the amount remaining, you bring down. So you're going to bring down that nine, draw an arrow. Now you have a new division problem because after you bring down, you're going to divide. 
8 goes into 79. Huh, well I know 8 times 10 is 80, and that's too big. So 8 goes into 79 9 times, so you're going to write that 9 in the quotient bar, and then think, how many do I have remaining? So you're going to draw a bar under 79 and write the number you have remaining. Well, 8 goes into 8. We said 8 goes into 79 9 times. That gives you 72. So you're going to have 7 remaining. And if you're not positive of that, then you're going to do a little subtraction off to the side. You would think 79. Well, 8 went into 79 9 times, which was 72. And we have 7 left over. That's where I got this. 7 from, because that's number remaining. And now you're going to bring down the 8. So draw a line down, because after you found out the remaining, you're going to bring it down. And once again, you have a very similar division problem. 78. 8 goes into 78 how many times? Well, you really just did this. Um, so you're going to recognize 8 goes into 78 9 times. That gave you 72, which you just did, and you have um, 6 remaining. But we do not write, big mistake that I often see students write, and this is not your fault because this is what you're taught. Students automatically go and write, okay, we have 6 remaining. Because that's how I'm talking about it the whole time. But that's not true. You don't have 6 remaining. You have 6 of the 8 remaining. So if you, th you think about it, 8, you had a group of 8, and 8 did not, that whole 8 did not go into 78 um, more than 9 times. Well, it only went in, it only went into 78 9 times, and you have 6 remaining, but it's really 6 of that 8. So it's really a remainder of 6 eighths. So it's 1,999 and 6 eighths. Of course, 6 eighths in simplest form is really 3 fourths. And 3 fourths is 0.75. So the answer to this problem is 1,099 and 3 fourths, or 1,099.75. So that's, th that's the way to do this type of a problem. If you, you do it on your calculator, you'll see it gives you 1,099.75. Um, and that's because of that 3 fourths. Um, as a fraction, as, as a decimal out of 1 is 0 0.75. Alright, let me give you one final problem and then you're going to create a whole bunch of problems for yourself and you can use a calculator. This is, push, these, push this aside. I will, can delete these. And this new problem, I'm just going to make it a little bit harder. And you're going to have to use some scrap paper as you do this. Um, hopefully you understand the concepts. I'm going to divide now by a number, number divided by 14. And I'm going to make that number 9,563. Long division often requires multiplication and checking work off on the side. So I'm going to try and, and model that for this. Going to go to the first step, the DRB. 14 goes into 9. Well, we know 14 doesn't go into 9. It goes into 9 zero times. So one thing I'm going to do is instead of find out the remaining, which 14 goes into 9 zero times, we're obviously going to have 9 remaining. And then bringing down the 5, I'm just going to automatically say, okay, 14 goes into 95. If you don't understand why I'm doing this, then you could think, okay, 14 goes into 9, 0 times, so you have 9 remaining, and then you're going to bring down a 5, but you see it's just going to be 95. So this is not a necessary step to do. Uh, I'm just going to move over and say 14 goes into 95. Well, I'm going to check here. I know 14 times 10 is 140. So I'm going to try, I'm going to use this like scratch paper, and I'm going to think 14 times 8. That gives me 8 times 4 is 32. And then this would be like carrying a 3 and 8. That's 112. That's too big. 
Um, so I'm going to try, let's try 14 times 6. So that seems to be a little bit closer. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2 is 8. Well, 84. Let's see, could I fit one more group of 14 in? 84 plus 14 would be 98. So 14 goes into 95 six times, which is what you just found. And that equaled 84. So the question is, how much do you have remaining? If you don't know, actually do the subtraction. Think about it, 95 minus 84. And you could do the subtraction off to the side, or you can actually just write it right up here, 95 minus 84, if you're not certain. Um, and what you would see, though, is that you have 11 remaining. So under the 95, we find out how many we have remaining. And you have 11 remaining. Always make sure that this 11 is smaller than the, the divisor. The divisor is 14. So if you have a number like 15 remaining, you know you did something wrong because you could have fit in another group of 14. In this case, 11 is smaller than 14, so it looks like we did something right. After we find the remaining, then bring down the 6. 14 goes into 116. Well, here's the, here's the thing that I don't have um, because I deleted my work, so it's good to write it off to the side. We did the 14 times 8. If you remember, I did it right here, and we got 112. Well, we have less than 14 remaining, so I know we can't have another group. 14 goes into 116 eight times. And when I did the work over here, you should remember that 14 times 8 was equal to, and I'm just going to show you again really quickly, hopefully. 14 times 8 was equal to, we had the 2 here, and then we carried the 3, and that was 112. So the next question is, how much do we have remaining? You shouldn't need to do any subtraction here. You should just recognize automatically, well, we have 4 remaining, because it didn't go in perfectly. I'm going to delete my work. Hopefully I won't need that again. And now it's just the same step. We're going to bring down that 3, so you're going to draw an arrow to see yourself bring it down. And now it's 14 goes into 43. Well, I'm going to try some things over here. Let me try 14 times 4. 14 times 4 times 4 is 16. And we would carry the 1, and that's 56. So that's too big. I can see that already. So I'm going to try 14 times 3. That's 12, carry the 1, and that's 42. That sounds perfect to me. Um, so it's 42, and so 14 goes into 43 three times, and that equaled 42, so we had one remaining. Now, when you express your answer, you're going to express that number remaining as 1 out of 14. And as a decimal, you'll see your calculator will tell you what that is as a decimal. So 9,563 divided by 14 is 683 and 1 14th. For the next problems, I want you guys to make up your own problems. Then use a calculator and check it. Try it on your own. That's the best way you're going to learn long division. Try it. Check with your calculator. Remember, your calculator is going to express the amount remaining is a decimal instead of a fraction. Just remember, boys and girls, it's all about the DRB. Later.